I did an album for Dot in 1957. It was a thing called Shifting Whispering Sands. It was with Billy Vaughn. It, it was a minister who had written this, uh, this thing called Shifting Whispering Sands and the uh, kind of a country western, but a thing bloated with a great choir. And they said, well, let's, let's do another thing, because that was a local hit for, for Dot Records. What else have you got? I said, well, there's this stuff I've accumulated called Word Jazz, and that's how the first album came out, Word Jazz. And it, uh, with their connections out in Los Angeles, it uh, immediately went to the top of the charts. Fred Astaire and Barry Chase wanted to dance to it, so I went out there. They wanted me to do a concert out there, but uh, the deeper I got into Hollywood, the more I realized that for every great talent, and there are some marvelous talents there, there are uh, 999 flakes. Uh, everybody you meet out there is either a star or is going to be a star, or has a script, or is going to have a script. And so they, they really, you're looking at each other as, as, as an open sesame to, to fame and celebrity. So that, uh, it scared the hell out of me. I said, who needs this? I love writing. In fact, the best ad libs are written as far as I'm concerned, but it gives you structure. Structure is a very important thing for poetry. Many of the things that I do are definitely written with the discipline of a, of a beat. For example, um, the thing I wrote called Woke Up to the Ceiling is uh, a 6-5 rhythm. So it was woke up to the ceiling, cracked above my bed, traced a snaking river in my inner head. That's a 6-5, six, 6-5 five, six, five syllable beat. Or uh, oh, all of them have that quality. There's a, or a 7-5. Uh, don't you wish you could be something that you're not? Don't you wish that you could be, is a seven beat line, something that you're not, is a five beat line. Don't you wish you could be something that you're not? You could maybe oscillate deep inside a dot. Maybe be magnetically ozone high at night, up where all those dancers are in the northern lights. That type of thing, it, it makes it easier to write and it, it's like a natural rhythm. Well, all the mu music I've done, or had done for me either way, is head music. Uh, get a group of like, quartet or a trio, it's better not to have too many people because they have to agree on the changes. And I tell them what I want them to do. For example, um, I wanted to do something on uh, spiders. And I, I made up a story about a, a spider that was weaving his web by the screen door, which was really like setting up a place where he knew there would be a lot of flies around. So uh, I would ask the musicians, I want you to be the, uh, the web, and uh, you could be the little uh, fly that's going to be caught in it. So each musician would have sort of the rhythm and the feel of, of being in that universe, which they love because you know, anything can go. So it's very free form in that regard. Either that, or I like to get a good groove going, which is very easy to read over. Liberty Jib and a Liberty Bop is, was a thing that sprang out of my, uh, my religious mother taking me to church all the time, Baptist church, because I was saved about 27 times, whoever the itinerant minister was. There was this stranger who came into our town. 
He was tall and had a dark look about him, and a special brilliance was in his eyes. When he looked at us, there was the feeling that he could see right down to the bottom. We may have been mistaken in this, but at the time, no questions were asked. The questions always come later. The idea that uh, there, someone would come into town and be the, the most exciting thing that had ever happened, he would get everybody together and then he'd preach to them and they'd just love it. But he was preaching, just saying the flip birdie jib bum, the bib birdie bop. It was a nonsense thing. And of course, the critics said, well, that's. That's nobody. That's just, he's just uh, making up nothing. That's a, he's a fraud. So the guy loses faith in himself, leaves town, and we all wait around for some other happy-looking guy to come by. Maybe an Elvis Presley or a Jimmy Swaggart or whatever. Whoever now Obama, you know, who's got this wonderful way of speaking. But eventually the power structure, just uh, jealous. People would make him lose his sense of his own importance, and so he leaves town. And then we go and wait through the time that's there, through all the, with hope, and, and uh, we remember how it used to be, wish we could go to something like it again, figuring it would never happen. And then it happens again, the same thing goes on. The premise there is the same thing happens. It's a kind of a croce circle. And then you finally say, how are things in your town? Presumption being that that happens everywhere. That type of thing is fun to do because it, uh, it gets it out of your system. And it's, uh, it's playing, playing with the language and with the words and with your mind. <laughs>